The heat has been turned up here at the Poker Masters. Five players all plunked down $25,000 as the buy-ins have escalated to find their way to this final table. And among them, Lou Garza. Back-to-back -back final tables here. Looking swaggy as they all head in to take their seats and take a shot at the title here in event number eight, the $25,000 No Limit Hold'em. Ali Najat alongside Maria Ho with the call. An impressive collection of talent and some real implications in the race for the Poker Masters jacket and overall series title, which we will get to. Those three right there, those who have a shot at the lead. Easiest path would belong to Brock Wilson, currently third in the overall race, just nine points behind Daniel Negreanu. Third place or better, and he will finish number one. John Reardon, who sits in seat number one. If he wins it and Wilson finishes fourth or fifth, he takes the lead, and of course, Lou Garza win this event and take it down, and currently he is poised to do just that with just shy of three million in chips to start the event or the final table rather. Chris Brewer, 1.8 million. Darren Elias, the most decorated World Poker Tour player of all time, just shy of 1.5 million. Followed by Brock Wilson. And rounding out the field, fifth in chips is John Reardon. But Owen. All in. Let's see if I get last one in. And Darren Elias oh. asks for John Reardon. <laughs> And a call. To participate, and Reardon oh complies. God, yeah. <laughs> Jack 10 suited. Pretty looking hand to find with an eight big blind stack. Oh, I might make three Blinds 20 and 40,000 with that 40K <laughs> ante. Did you bust the first hand of? Yeah, I think so. First hand I played, I think like I just pulled it twice. Okay. Good luck, Darren. And I want to get this 320,000 is. A little shy of 20% of Elias' stack, so he is spinning the wheel and oh comes God. up with trip fours. You can't, even hit the, you can't even get the queen of clubs. This <laughs> is a really bad spot for Reardon now. Just 3% equity, as you can see. No, the king doesn't, do, the king doesn't give him much. I'll give him the jack. No, what you want is the four spades for the chop. Oh, there's the club on the turn that restores some hope. So far, a made for TV run out. Or Queen of Clubs. Queen of Clubs. Is the flush there? No, it is not. Yeah. Just the 10 and John Reardon's tenure oh, here at this final I table. I <laughs> Lasts just one hand in the short stack dispatch, but not before picking up $114,000 for the F. No, change it up. Yeah, actually, I just found out that he was, I think, a financial analyst before he decided to take up poker full time. Yep. So not surprised. A lot of people from finance work their way into poker. First one that comes to mind for me is Andy Frankenberger. Also a decorated World Poker Tour player. Ken Fitton. Oh. Brewer the Razor with Jack-10 suited. Garza choosing to flat with the Ace-8 suited on the button, and they will take a flop heads up. Eight right away in the window. Top pair, top kicker against two overs and a gutty. Brewer pumping the brakes. Garza, of course, with enough hand here to go for some value, some protection from exactly the type of hand that Brewer has. Ten second. Bet ninety thousand. Garza betting one third pot. will make the call despite there being no heart on board. Check. 
Checks the queen. And this is a pretty definitive street in the hand in terms of what Garza wants to do. He decides to check, obviously doesn't have the strong enough hand to go for value on both turn and river, because if you get called on the turn, then most likely there's a chance that your hand won't be good at the river. But now does Brewer want to try to bluff? 10 seconds. Four forty in the middle. Yeah, and the answer is yes. That is a sizable bet too. Three hundred and fifty thousand. And for me, Maria, this becomes a "did you hit the queen or not" kind of spot. Yeah, I definitely think that it is a little bit of a stretch. Not too much, but considering the way this hand was played to give Brewer credit for, you know, over pairs and those type of big traps, I think is a little bit less likely than did he check call with two overs, one of them containing a queen and hit on the turn. There's so much that didn't get there in the way of straights. This deuce is just so clean. I gotta believe Lou finds the call here. What do you think? Yeah, especially because this sizing being a little bit polarizing in nature yeah. doesn't really give much room for hands like maybe nines or tens. Garza into the tank, by the way. Two time extensions utilized already. Did Garza bring his cape? to the final table today? That is the question. Well, there certainly are more heroic calls to make than this one, but nevertheless, it would take some guts, and you saw the reluctance with which he makes the call, but it is the right one, and what a good feeling that'll be for Lou Garza as he picks off Chris Brewer and takes down an over 1.1 million chip pot in the process. 1.3? Uh, yeah, I should count. I think a little less. Uh, 1.15, 1.12. All in. Elias says all in with the two sevens and Brewer has been dealt ace king of spades. A snap call here as the two blinds will square off and Brewer will look to avoid elimination I mean, and claw back some of those chips yeah, that he sent situation. over to Darren. Yeah, One pot to go. Meanwhile, I'm sure we all know who <laughs> Brock Wilson's rooting for. No question, he'd love to see an elimination here Great as he shot. would be able to ladder up. Eight, nine, ten, jet. And the flop is nine for Trey. Not great for Brewer. There is one spade out there, some backdoor wheel prospects, but the sevens looking good as they build on their equity, going from 52% to 71 now. Here comes the turn. The five of spades oh. is soaking wet. Spicy, spicy turn. Now, 17 outs for Brewer to avoid elimination. An ace, king, deuce, or spade. Is it there? Yes, it is. The four of spades giving Brewer the nut flush. And dealing a blow to Elias's stack, which is now sub one million. Brock back to that eight big blind stack, Fine. folded to him in the small blind. Queen eight. It's, like it's time to go. But oh, <laughs> man. Time to go <laughs> might be a little more oh. on the nose than you expected it to be, Maria, as he has run into an ace queen. And the two-man show in continues. Call, like hands in the I think we've been all in against each other. Well, five hands. Yeah. Well, now Dale and I, too. Yeah, literally four in a row all on call. Yeah, on that's call. insane. 
action dealer here. Now I'd really take a job. <laughs> I mean, I want Dale one, obviously. No offense, Brock. Ace we'll four, deuce, and... <laughs> No, it's yeah, it's Brock Wilson, that's your event true, four winner. That, so. Two or three out there. Looking yeah. like the eight. it could be the end of the road for him. Right. And yeah. courtesy of the yeah. six of diamonds, yeah. it is iced. Elias finishing off Brock Wilson, who certainly made a splash thus far in the Poker Masters. And hand. might he continue? Wild. Five hands I him. definitely have <laughs> given away too many chips thinking that I was somehow getting bullied or somebody was getting out of line with me when they simply just had it. Brewer, two scoops from the button with the King Jack. And Elias will take a twirl with 10 deuce. Spade in the window, followed by another one and a deuce to boot as he has a pair and a flush draw up against top pair with the Jack of Spades working. Both players checking. Turn doesn't change anything. Yeah, again, we see Brewer protecting his check back range. Last time we saw him check back top pair in a situation where Elias actually had him beat. And this time again, Brewer just hoping that he is able to extract some value with this strong of a hand. Bit. One hundred sixty five thousand. What a weird spot now for Darren. Yeah, obviously a pair and a flush on the flop looks really good, but once you brick the turn, there's just one card to come. You realize that your equity, if you're up against a real hand, shrinks quite a bit. Obviously, he's not going to fold, but maybe had higher hopes for how to proceed. Denied the opportunity, courtesy of Brewer's check back. Oh. On the flop and the check. deuce on the river, a beautiful card for him. You have to imagine Brewer's going to value bet this King Jack. Yeah, especially as played with that check back. So many missed draws between... The flush draw, some gut shot straights possible from the flop as well as the turn. This is going to be painful. And a smoldering pile of 400,000 deposited in front of Chris Brewer. Raise impending. Ten seconds. Elias going to use a time extension here. And we see quite a bit of this being employed, Maria, where the time banks are leveraged in order to make it look as though somebody's got a closer decision than they do. Darren knows 1,000%. He's going to be check raising. Yeah. And, hands, man. <sighs> and sometimes it's also just deciding I almost on the, the back. Like, I am so nutted for this spot, but like, I really almost checked back. <laughs> this is so dumb. I mean... I really, like, I play with some of the wheel fucking hands, like. Ten seconds. Yeah, we're going to take a few of these. Um, I don't know. I mean, last time, I'm sure by now someone's told him that he made the correct fold <laughs> in this like, type of situation. I have the jack situation. of spades in my hand. I'm probably supposed to call a ton. Like, blocking it's suited too, but. 
Might as well just like put it in. <laughs> I don't know. Oh uh, man. I really think I'm supposed to just call, but like, what the fuck? Brewer has invested 625,000 into this hand already and has just 925 remaining. This decision is for his tournament life. Problem is, you might just call ace two on the tom, and then once he's talking the offsuit twos, it becomes really fucking bad for me to call. You really, I mean, having a spade is so good. 10 seconds. I have a minute left after this. Yeah, I, I, I okay. took one of the yeah, yeah, yeah. So Thank you. Yeah. This particular line that Darren took doesn't feel very bluff heavy. So but doesn't, I really almost checked back. Doesn't make this decision any easier for Chris. <laughs> I guess what, I don't know. I mean, you only have suited twos. That is true. I would agree with that. Doesn't yeah, think yeah. that Elias would be defending I mean, I with the offsuit 10 deuce ridiculous. combos. Can Brewer make the right decision again against the same opponent in a very similar spot? Like I know I'm supposed to call, but it's just Wolf like, Nothing. It's just wolf like nothing. Okay, I don't know. Seconds. Yeah. Well, it's I worth 2.4 million in chips if you're right. Caught. I fold. I don't know. I think he'll be very happy in 30 minutes time, but right now feels disgusting. Feels bad, man, but. Takes all a break. All and Brewer, moving all in with the 8-6 suited, runs it into an ace-4 for Garza. Put him with the sauce. Will Garza be able to hold on? He had an ace-4 up against a 10-6 earlier against Brewer. That's how they ended up flip-flopping. Brewer ended up winning that confrontation. Will he be able to pull a rabbit out of a hat once more? Here comes the flop, an eight in the window, and it is looking good for Chris Brewer right now, who has gotten it in against Garza with the worst of it on two occasions. Turn card is a five, and now three lonely outs for Garza. Needs a needle on the river here. Is there one available? There is not. And that is it. Chris Brewer shaking hands. Everybody showing their respect for Lou Garza, who certainly did his best, but in the end could do nothing but get it in with the best of it and let the deck do the rest. And on this occasion, it was uncooperative. He ends up with the third place finish in almost 200,000. At this point, the goal is to win all of the chips. Well, option. Nevertheless, we see Brewer with Ace-10 suited, choosing to limp the button. In search of balance. And you see Darren okay. shoot him a look before deciding to check back. Yeah, we see that Brewer, again, has that balanced limping range with this type of stack depth, has some hands that he is going to limp call it off with, and okay. earlier with the Jack-9, some hands that he's just looking to see a flop with. Both players hit the 10-5 deuce board, advantage Brewer in a real way. As he casually flings a yellow bird out there. You're a yellow bird. I don't know. I don't know why. You've been mean and violent to me in the booth all day. It just felt like that was the best I could do. I that had to retaliate. Hogwash. <laughs> like karate chopping me <laughs> on a break. Remotely close to true. There was no contact made. I was shadow boxing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Elias taking the high V line here. Check raising this queen five with the backdoor clubs. And for Chris Brewer, 
Penn State can on. Uh, yeah. Win. We certainly could think about doing exactly what he's done, which is pile. Okay. Yeah, this is interesting because there is that very clear flush draw possible on the board. And so Elias is at the moment going to be beating a hand like that. Some 1. type 5. of oh, 1.6 semi bluff, you know, perhaps a gut shot straight draw the ace four, the ace threes suited. 1.6 total. 1.6. Here we go. So Elias has chosen to draw a line in the sand. Looking to finish Brewer off here. Obviously the two hearts on the board, Maria. Some percentage of the time Brewer might have been pressing with a heart draw. Maybe some straight draws in the mix. But of course, as we see, he has the lion's share of the equity on the turn. The three of diamonds does not help Darren's prospects here. And all Chris Brewer needs to do is fade a five or a queen to double up and take down this 3.5 million chip pot. And he's done it. The eight of clubs on the river. And would you look at this, Ali? Chip stacks about even now and Elias briefly felt like he was up for air but has slid right back to 13 bigs Ten nine off on the button all in watch it's 1.6 and he's gonna rip it right in there Maria 13 bigs effective. Oh. Looks oh. like Chris found something to call with. Is it King X? King nine, I'm being told, is the hand that Brewer has decided to defend with. And pretty good situation for him, given that he shares the nine with Elias. And before we get any further, Maria, how do you feel about the 10-9 all in? I, I mean, I think it's fine, given his stack size. I think it's within your shoving range, but hate to see it, of course, when you're dominated. A lot of times you're supposed to have two live cards, not just one. No help on the flop or the turn for this 10-9, and Chris Brewer is one card away from coming back and besting Darren Elias. All he has to do is fade a 10. And he's done it. Him down. Him down. That's fine. King High holds, and Darren Elias finishes in second place, while Chris Brewer I is your show. event number eight champion, winning $427,500 and leaving yeah, Darren nice Elias way. to wonder what could have been as he will collect $285,000 for second. Says there's been a shakeup in the overall Poker Masters leaderboard, courtesy of the results here in event number eight. And there is still plenty more to come in the series. The final table of event number nine, the 25K PLO, comes our way tomorrow. And of course, we have the 50K and the 100K still looming large. But in the meantime, on behalf of our entire crew here in Las Vegas and my partner Maria Ho, I'm Alina Jat saying so long, and we'll see you next time.